Hey, what's happening guys? Happy Friday to you. It's going to be a quick one today. I got a question from a guy named Wade in Wyoming. And he said, what makes some things conduct electricity and some things not? So what he's asking is, what's the difference between a conductor and an insulator? Now, if you look here, I've got some items laid out here. This is a guitar pick made out of nylon. This is a neodymium magnet. A uh, little machinist rule made out of steel. Some solder, which is uh, tin and lead. And a piece of wood. Here's a multimeter set for resistance. If I touch these together, we'll get no resistance. There you go. So, I mean, you guys, you're into electronics. You obviously know that the plastic and the wood aren't going to conduct but the solder the rule and the magnet all will conduct paper just like wood no conduct but why why let's go over to the computer okay so we have three different substances here this is glass, this is iron, and this is wood, specifically spruce. So, taking a look at them macroscopically here, what do we see? You know, the glass is pretty much like glass. It's transparent, somewhat smooth. The iron seems to be made up of little flakes, kind of. It's actually a crystalline structure, but yeah. And the wood seems to be made up of little lattices, I would call them. But none of that gives us an idea of why. So let's go a little bit deeper. Okay, guys, so we're going to get down to why some things conduct electricity and why some don't. Now, if you take a look here at my crude little drawing of an atom, here we have protons, these pinkish colored things, neutrons, the yellow color things, and they make up the nucleus of the atom. Now, out here in the asteroid fields are smaller but way more important, electrons. I think it's been a long time since I've had physics, but I think the first ring holds two, and the second ring holds four. So if we think back to our iron and our spruce and our plastic, we can look at this. Oops. Come here. Oh, I got all one window. There we go. We can, can't tell anything from here. I mean, their, their atomic structure is pretty much that. But here's where we get into the interesting bits, okay? It has to do with the free electrons. Things like wood, paper, glass, air below a certain voltage, which is very high. These are all insulators. They have no free electrons. You, you literally have to make a chemical change to these things. For instance, you can combust the wood and the paper and do a chemical change. That will pass off some of the electrons. But they do not conduct electricity. So now, if we talk about things like 
iron, steel, which is just iron with some added things to it, uh, copper, silver, gold, platinum. These things are conductors. So if you imagine a wire, well, then you have to be a wire. It could be just a flat piece, okay? But you can imagine it as a wire if that helps you. <laughs> anyway, this is some sort of steel, okay? Or iron, whatever. It is some sort of conductor. So inside this are, are atoms of steel. This is made up of our atoms of steel. And of course around them, switching colors if you're wondering what I'm doing, are there free electrons? I do not know how many. I don't care. It's simply the theory, okay? So here we'll call this um, What's called gold. <laughs> I don't know why I went there, but that's what it is. So there is our piece of gold. And now let's say we have uh, some sort of termination on here. You know, maybe like a little screw kind of termination going on there. And then we have some wire attached to this in the back that's feeding it. So when we apply a current to this wire, the free electrons from this wire are able to bump into these free electrons and basically move them down the wire. That's what makes it conductive. All right, I don't know if I'm making any sense here. So we'll call this our uh, wire, and this is like a piece of cloth. These are our terminal blocks. This is our feeder wire and it's bringing the current in. So when it gets here, it bumps into the wire. Those free electrons travel. They bump into the next electron and the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. And, the next one, and they push it down the wire until they can't go no more. Now, when we get to the piece of cloth or any other insulator, you know, it still has... You know, it's share of electrons, but when the current is applied here, they simply stop. That is the insulation. So there you have it, a simple explanation of why this will conduct electricity and this won't. It's just the arrangement of the electrons. I hope that helped. If it did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.